Here it is, the 2023 Honda Pilot. Did Honda make the right changes to this all new, fully redesigned Pilot? We're gonna take a look today and see if we can answer that question. But there are a couple of things here that are new. But one thing I'm kind of disappointed about, and this is strictly from my point of view, the CRV now has the hydraulic hood struts. I don't know why Honda didn't add that here. So still have the manual prop rod there. Not a big deal for most people. So, you know, probably not even worth mentioning, but it is there. Here's something worth mentioning, the panoramic sunroof. After I ran a poll not long ago, I know a lot of you prefer the panoramic sunroof. So we're gonna take an in-depth look at exactly what Honda has changed here uh, what's been added, all that good stuff, and give you a good idea as to whether or not Honda really did make the right changes. Obviously, you're going to see the redesigned front end. That jumps out pretty easily for you. From the A-pillar forward, a lot more squared off, but really everything's kind of more squared off, a more boxy look. Still going to have the LED headlights and the LED fog lights down there on the lower portion of the bumper. The active air curtain right here is gonna help out with gas mileage as far as getting down the road. And I know a lot of you like for me to feature lower trim levels. We'll get there. This is the Elite, so it's the top trim level. You're gonna have the chrome surround right here and also on the top of the grill right there. The grill kind of having almost a large honeycomb look to it, a nice look. You're gonna have your sensors down here, your parking sensors and all that good stuff. Honda Sensing is here. That means you're gonna have your lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, road departure mitigation, traffic jam assist that works at 45 miles per hour or below. That means that you can set the speed to maintain with traffic and the vehicle will basically drive itself. Pretty easy system to use. Now it only works at 45 miles per hour or below. And once you've been stopped for five seconds, it deactivates, just so you know. Turn signal indicators are built into these heated power adjustable side view mirrors. And let me show you something here that might be of great interest to a lot of you. I didn't say everything there because I'm going to push this button right here and watch what happens. Power folding side view mirrors as well. So quite a bit going on there. There is just so much here that Honda has done. I know I'm giving you a bit of a sneak peek of the interior, but we're gonna talk about that more in depth later. So tire and rim size, 255 on the width. Nice meaty sidewall or, or tread pattern, I should say. The sidewall is a 50 series. I'm gonna get ahead of myself there. And in this particular case, let's go back here and take a better look. You're gonna have the 20 inch rim. One advantage to not having the hydraulic struts to hold the hood up is that we can take advantage of what I like to call the vehicle visionary port right here. It's really the service port, but I call it the vehicle visionary port where we can put the manual prop rod here and give you a better view of the new 3.5 liter V6. This is not the same engine that was under the hood previously. It is still a 3.5 liter, only a five horsepower increase. So 285 horsepower. The torque numbers are still 262. Trail Sport and Elite trim levels are going to come standard with all-wheel drive. All of the other trim levels will come standard with front-wheel drive, but all-wheel drive is optional, so an available option there. And let's talk about MPGs. Let's see what we have here. 19 City, 25 Highway, 21 combined. And right here, Honda says you should use 4.8 gallons of gas per every 100 miles you drive. Not too terribly bad. Another change here, gone is the nine speed automatic transmission in favor of the 10 speed automatic transmission. This is the only engine and transmission combination available, but not necessarily a bad option. I'm curious to see if I can tell any differences on the test drive, we'll find out. And here is a look at your remote. You can see that it does have remote start right there and all of the other things that you're probably used to seeing. I do wanna show you something you might have seen that already. But when you lock the interior, guess what? The power folding side view mirrors do fold in. So good news there. A very nice overall look. Again, everything kind of just boxy looking here, but it really gives the brand new Pilot a more aggressive look. Speaking of that, what are the differences in size? Overall length measured from bumper to bumper has increased by 3.4 inches. And wheelbase that you measure from the center of one tire 
to the center of the other increases by 2.8 inches. The front end will increase between 1.1 and 1.2 inches and the rear between 1.4 and 1.5 inches. And speaking of the rear, we do have the hands-free lift gate back here. See if I can show you how that works right there. You just swipe your foot underneath and you do have the walk away close feature. Now, one thing before I demonstrate that, that I do want to show you real quick, see how low this lift gate is? If you want to change the height, all you're going to do is push that up and just hold this button down until you hear the beeps. Hopefully you could hear that. So I'm going to go ahead and close that back down for you and let you see that it does indeed raise to its full opening capacity. Let's make sure we've got time there. There we go. Now it's going to open all the way. And then I'll show you the walk away close feature. All you're going to do is push this button right here and it's going to beep. And as you walk away, it's going to close. Kind of an interesting thing, but that's how it works. So that way you can just walk away and you know that everything is taken care of. Cargo capacity is going to be 18.6 up to 86.5 and 87 cubic feet. So you got a, quite a bit of space here as far as that goes. Obviously we have the third row down right now, but I'll go in here and show you how to lower the center row, which is not a big deal to do. We're just going to reach down here and do it this way. Very easy to do. You can do that with both sides, obviously making things very simple. Towing capacity does come in at 5,000 pounds and you do have quite a large area down here of space. So there is a lot there. And do you notice the difference? Here is the carpeted side. Now I flipped the floor over basically. This is nothing new, but just so you know that you can still flip the floor over and have the plastic side here. If you do something back here with maybe some plants or something that's gonna get things dirty, well, now you can still flip the floor over. Nothing new here again, but you can flip that floor over and keep things nice and clean. And by the way, if you're wondering, how do you lower these rear seats? right here. You're just going to pull right there and you can see that the seats do recline, but I'm not trying to show you how to recline them. I'm trying to show you how to lower them, but just so you know how that works. I'm doing that one-handed, very easy to do. And taking a look in through the passenger side door, I like the fact that you have nice large door bins in the rear, pretty much the same size here as far as the upper and lower go. You do have nice soft touch materials, a comfortable armrest, so definitely nice like the look of the trim right here. Kind of almost reminds me of Pac-Man. Some of you don't even know what Pac-Man is, depending on your age, but you might. And then you're gonna have the power seats for the driver and the passenger. A nice look with that new brown interior, really looking very nice. And obviously the same thing here with the newly redesigned dashboard. Now the thing I like here, you have the space right here. So a little bit more space, easy to fit cell phones in there and whatever. You've got the gloss black surround on the air conditioning vents, but here's the thing that I like. I'm not against the design of other Honda vehicles, but you don't have that honeycomb design here where it basically goes all the way across. That's not bad necessarily, but I like the fact that it's different here. That's good. And you're gonna have two different options for USB connectivity, and there's a 12 volt power outlet, space right here for a phone, or you might wanna leave your phone right here on the wireless charging pad. Still gonna have the push button shifter. Tell me what you think about that. Were you hoping for something different than what Honda has done here? Maybe a regular traditional shifter or maybe a column shifter. I'm always curious to know what you have to say about that. Cup holders, and then the multitasking lid for the arm, or for the armrest and the lid for the console. It doubles as both, so that's why it's a multitasker. And then quite a bit of space down here within the center console itself as well. So quite a bit going on here. One thing you might wonder about is the conversation mirror here. What do you know? There it is right there. You can still ki give the kids the angry eyes or the kind eyes if they're being good. And it's also another multitasker, not only the conversation mirror, but also your sunglass holder. And pretty much the same thing on the driver's side that we saw on the passenger side, with a few little exceptions. You've really already seen a lot of this, but all the controls for those windows, and then you can lock the windows, your lock and unlock feature right here. You can control those power adjustable heated side view mirrors that you can also hit that button and fold in, and seat memory right here as well. 
the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. You can drop that lever and make take advantage of that. You can also open and close the power rear lift gate right there. And obviously everything here is power as well. So we'll reach up here and hit the push button start. And let you see what happens when the newly redesigned instrument cluster comes to life. But to make it a little bit easier to see in here, here's how you're going to either open or open or close your power sunroof right here, or you're going to close the shade. I told you there was a power shade up there. So there you go. You can see that is closing to make it a little bit easier for us to see things. That's this control right here. This is for the sunroof itself. So here's what we have with the newly redesigned digital dash. Tell me what you think about that. I think that's a big improvement, not that it necessarily needed to improve to begin with, but you do have the ability to scroll through a lot of features and functionality here. You can see what I'm doing right there. Just see it in real time, basically, depending on what you want to do. And then there we go. Here's everything for adaptive cruise control and turning on your traffic jam assist. You do have the paddle shifters here on the steering wheel for rowing your way through the gears for the 10-speed automatic transmission. You're still going to control the headlight functionality and the fog lights right here on the turn signal stock, and that's how you're still going to turn your blinkers on. Hopefully you're using your blinkers when you're out driving around. And the control for the front and rear window wipers. Here's our push button start and the infotainment screen, a very nice infotainment screen going to have built-in navigation, but you can still pair your phone and use your favorite apps there as well, depending on what your situation is and what your preferences are. Here's what we have here. A lot going on. Let's go into general settings real quick and just want to show you a few things that are here. Obviously, it's pretty easy to figure out what's going on. We've got camera right there. If you want to make changes to the camera views, well, you can do that. And I'll tell you what, there are a lot of those here. Going into reverse, check out what we have here. The multi-view camera as far as the rear view camera goes. And then, obviously, you can turn your trajectory lines on and off and all that good stuff. Or you can change your view as well. But check out what we have right here. You also have the overhead 360 degree view. That makes a big difference. I really like that. So we'll go back into park right here and just take a quick look around just to make sure we cover everything that I know you probably want to see. So you have cabin talk right there. That's going to be nice. Your display mode. Obviously, it, we could do a full video purely on this particular feature right here, but I wanted to show you how nice this looks within the vehicle settings. The nice graphics, if you want to change things, you can do that. You can turn that power rear lift gate feature on and off if you want to. You can do that right here just so you can see what all is there. It's so simple to use. You really don't need any help learning it. If you've never had this technology before, listen, it's so easy you can teach yourself. I guarantee it. Here's your driving assist setup. Depending on what you want to change or adjust, you can. If you feel like something is too aggressive, well, you can change it. You can turn it off. You can see what all is here as far as all of our features go. And I don't know if my camera is going to pick it up or not. We might try and get in a better place where we can see it. But there is a heads-up display there. That makes a difference. And then let's see here. Let's turn on the AC. We're going to just make sure that we're not blasting that too high. But there is your AC. And guess what? Do you see that? Yep. A lot of you are going to be happy. You don't have to be in Canada to have more than heated seats. There's our heated seats. There's our ventilated seats. And obviously on both sides for the driver and the passenger. So a nice little Easter egg of sorts there for you. Obviously still dual zone climate control. You can sync or unsync those if you want to. Very nice. Obviously a very nice setup here. But that's not all there is. And what about your driving modes? Let's take a quick look through those. Hopefully you can see that well. You can see there are quite a few driving modes, depending on what you want to use. It's all here. There you go. So that's very simple. Earlier, I showed you the front camera and the front camera washer. So how exactly does that work? Here is the front camera. You can see that I pulled up to a vehicle right here where we're a little bit closer to it. 
And so if I needed to clean my front camera, all I'm going to do, every time you run the windshield washer fluid, it's going to do it anyway, but I'm just gonna pull back on the stalk right there and you're gonna see that it sprays windshield washer fluid across the front camera. By the way, one more thing to help you out here. You don't have to go into reverse to get to your cameras. So let me go back into park. There's a button right here. Push that button and up come your cameras. And so I'll show you the feature for the camera washer one more time right there. Make that nice and easy for you just so that you can see how that works. Okay, we're out for our test drive and I wanted to show you something real quick. I brought the camera up on the screen, the front camera, and I've had people ask about this before, not with Hondas really, but with other vehicles and say, well, I can't get it to stay on when I'm driving. That's because when you reach a certain speed, and I don't know what it is offhand here with the Pilot, but it will go off as you've already seen. It's a pretty low speed. I think it's five miles per hour. Not completely sure about that because I wasn't paying attention to the speedometer when I did that. But for those who may ask about that, since this is a fairly new feature for Honda, well, now you know the answer to the question in case it's a question you had. So, what is it like to drive this new Pilot? Well, so far, I'm enjoying the drive. The ride quality seems to be good. I haven't been on a lot of different road surfaces so far, but it does seem to be good. It's not necessarily an issue that needed to be improved upon as far as ride quality goes with the previous generation, but still a good ride quality here. And let me slow down just a little bit. I'm kind of curious to see about something. Let's just give it a little bit of gas. I can't really tell a difference per se in how it feels as far as the acceleration. We're only talking five extra horsepower, but when I'm watching my head up display, I could see the speed rising a lot quicker than what I was expecting it to be doing based on what I was hearing. So what am I saying? Basically 285 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque made it to that 10-speed automatic transmission should be more than enough to take care of whatever any pilot owner has with this 2023 model. Comfortable as far as the seating goes. Obviously, you have fully adjustable seats. The fact that you have not only heated but ventilated here, the cooled seats, that really makes a difference. I think that's a game changer because for the longest time on, on these vehicles, you had to live, at least I know it was this way with the Ridgeline, you had to live in Canada to get ventilated seats, not anymore. And a very easy vehicle to see out of just based on what I'm seeing. But you know, you do have blind spot monitoring here, so it really alleviates any issues of a blind spot anyway. But overall, I must say I'm impressed here. Overall, I'm very impressed with what I'm experiencing here. It'd be fun to take one of these out in snow. I know that the previous generation did well with all-wheel drive in the snow. You do have the snow mode, so I don't expect that to be any different than what it's been in the past. Uh, any all-wheel drive vehicle is going to do well. One thing about the all-wheel drive system here is that it is capable of putting 70% of the power to the ground via the rear tires. So if you're curious about that, well, now you know. So tell me down in the comments section, do you believe that Honda made the right changes to the 2023 Honda Pilot? Curious to know. Tell me what your answer is and tell me why you answered the way that you did. I got to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this all new Pilot for the day. And a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.